Um, so I don't know. I'm wondering, maybe I should let them do this talk because uh, they were with me uh, trying to fix cer certain things about the slides and um, I think I fixed them so well that basically I messed everything up even more. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. They don't seem to be too delighted about the idea, so anyway. Um, my talk is called Transforms and Poly What? Actually, it's polyedra, but I thought, well, a lot of people tell me that octa thing you did, and they don't really remember the entire name and that. So I thought, polyedra, who's gonna remember that? Poly what? Um, another way of describing them would be something like solids, but solids is too general because spheres are also solids, cylinders are also solids, so let's narrow the definition a bit. Solids that have only flat faces. So um, let's see. I have no idea what I'm going to be talking about. Um, I initially thought letting you pick from, I don't know, this demo, that demo. But then I thought, well, the paradox of choice is going to screw me over with this. So I said three options. And I thought I picked them well, except I messed up one of them, so there are just two available, which makes things basically more easier, uh, easier for you. So the first one is going to be this one, which has already started. So let's pretend you don't see this bit. You don't see this bit. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts something like this. It's a cube. And um, then this cube explodes into pyramids. And these pyramids move a bit. And then they recombine into a shape, which is called the rhombic dodecahedron. And it has um, 12 uh, faces. Each face is a rhombus. Um, and then basically it goes back to what it was before. And the next option would be this one, which again has already started. <laughs> so um, yeah, um, pretend you don't see it for a little longer. So this is how it starts. It's an octahedron. It's a regular um, polyhedron with eight faces. And then they get cut from the vertices, and even more. And then it results a cube octahedron, which is the last thing. And then it expands again to what it was initially. So um, which of these two is, is it going to be? This one? Or this one. So who's in favor of one? In favor of two? So I guess one seemed noisier. Does everybody agree? Okay. So one it is. And I knew I should have put something like a click confirmation because I had no idea if this worked. If I actually clicked the damn thing. So we'll see. First of all, we're not going to get directly into it. We're going to start with a short recap of 2D geometry. And first of all, what a polygon is. Well, it's a closed broken line in the plane. Uh, the number of vertices equals the number of edges. There are only straight lines as edges. There are no arcs, nothing curvy in there. And there are no uh, three successive points on the same line. But this is just words. It's better to draw, right? So we can have something simple like this. A simple convex polygon. And then we also have something like this, which is a concave polygon or something like this, which is a self-intersecting polygon. And a special uh, kind of self-intersecting polygons are these. You may know this shape. This is a star polygon, which is a bit different from a star-shaped polygon, which is something like this. <coughs> uh, 
However, we are, aren't going to talk about all these things. Uh, concave, self-intersecting, no. We're gonna deal with simpler things. So polygons we're gonna be using, rectangles. Everything is a rectangle, basically. That's what, where we start from. Squares, same width and height. Parallelograms, opposite edges are parallel, opposite angles are equal. So the orange ones are equal, and the violet ones are equal as well. And um, rhombing. A rhombus is like a parallelogram, only all its edges are equal, not just the opposite ones. And also its diagonals are perpendicular. And then we're gonna have triangles, more types. <laughs> so, um, now for a short CSS recap. What transforms do to elements? Well, let's take Ru here. He has a system of coordinates. And um, if we apply a transform to him, um, not only does the transform <coughs> rotate, also the system of coordinates gets rotated. And if we apply something like a skew, then gets skewed the system of coordinates as well. For a translate, we're gonna get the same thing. The system of coordinates gets uh, translated, but not with these units. Right? And the translate is uh, really useful because we can uh, put it in between two other transforms, and in that way, we're gonna be able to uh, move the transform origin. And um, this is uh, particularly useful when we need different transform origins for two transforms of the same chain. So we're gonna leave Ru alone, not going to torture her any further. She might not like it and might start acting like a wild animal or something. And um, so this is pretty easy. This is a rectangle. Everything is a rectangle initially in CSS. And if you give it equal width and height, it's a square, obviously. And um, then we just uh, add a transform. Skew 15 degrees. And this is a parallelogram. And since rhombus is um, a parallelogram with all edges equal, we can just give equal width and height, and we get a rhombus, right? Right? Yeah. No. <laughs> Wrong. Look at this. Does this look like a rhombus? It has equal width and height, but it's not a rhombus. So this is because of the way the skew transform works. So we have initially a square, and um, then we change the skew angle. And as you can see, as I increase the skew angle, the lateral edges, the ones parallel to the other um, axis, not the one along which we skew, they get longer. And you can also see that the y coordinate of any random point inside the original square gets preserved, while the x coordinate is um, uh, changing, and it varies by a value, d, which seems to vary with the angle. And it's the same thing for the y-axis, right? So, um, what's happening behind? Well, we're gonna have to go back to a bit of trigonometry. And um, there are a few relations which are important, and basically everything, all the maths, reduces to this. So we have one theorem, which says that uh, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So it's basically the edge opposing the 90 degree angle, which um, my dad used to tell me when I was little. That's the angle that boils at 90 degrees, right? Um, and then uh, we have the, uh, a few trigonometric functions and the sine of alpha, which is a over c, 
and the cosine of alpha, which is B over C, and the tangent of alpha, which is A over B. So basically, these are all the formulas that everything reduces to. And we apply trigonometry for a particular skew X, so of a skew of angle alpha. So this is uh, the skew angle. And we have that L is um, our, ledge, our edge length before the skew. And M, like you see it uh, lights up here. The title covers it, damn it. Um, um, and alpha is the skew angle, as I've said before. And in the highlighted uh, right triangle, this one here, we have that cosine of alpha is going uh, to be L over 2 over M over 2. And tangent of alpha is going to be this D over L over 2. So um, from here, we can get the relation of the, uh, of the lateral edge between the lateral edge after the skew and, uh, and the one between the skew. So this means that if you want to reduce the lateral edges so that uh, they have, again, the same length as they had before the skew, which is equal to the other two edges, then uh, we need to multiply them with cosine of alpha. So this is... Um, exactly what we do here. And I'm not going to use 60 degrees. I'm going to use, uh, um, I'm going to use uh, 60 degrees because uh, the angle is easier. And we're going to scale along the other axis because we skewed all along the x-axis. So we scale along the uh, y-axis by cosine of 60 degrees, which is 0.5. And this one actually has equal width and height, and it is a rhombus. Um, now, let's think, how do we get a triangle? Well, a triangle is basically half a rhombus, right? But first, let's look at a few notions. Um, in circle, circumcircle, and more. So what is an in circle? The in circle is the circle inside, obviously. And uh, the circumcircle is the circle containing all the vertices. So the incircle is the one that touches all the edges, and the circumcircle the one that um, contains all the vertices. And um, you can see that as uh, I increase the number of edges, they get closer and closer together until finally the polygon approximates a circle. So uh, now uh, let's think something else. This is the inner radius. And this is uh, the regular polygon's edge. This is the inner radius, and this is the circumradius. And um, in this highlighted triangle, which is bigger here, and everything overlaps, we have that sine of beta over 2 is L over 2 over R. And the tangent, beta over 2, is L over 2 over R. So from here we can get the circumcircle and the incircle if we know the edge of a regular polygon. So knowing um, this, uh, this beta is um, the central angle corresponding to an edge of um, a regular polygon. And knowing these, we can go further and see how we can get um, a triangle. So we start with a rhombus. And then we take a rectangle with an edge equal to a diagonal of the rhombus. And then we cut everything outside the rhombus. And uh, this is how we get a triangle. Their intersection is a triangle. So how do you do that? So we start with the rhombus. And we take a child of the rhombus, or a before and after skew element. And let's see, initially, you can see that uh, the transforms of the parent get applied for the child as well. So um, we need to undo them. And we need to undo them in reverse order as we apply them. So we have initially transform is um, scale x, 
1 over 4. And then it's um, skew y, which is minus 45 degrees. And um, then we have rotate minus 22.5 de um, degrees. And um, I busted something here degrees. Exactly. This doesn't look exactly as it looked before, right? It's, the position of uh, the rectangle is not correct. So um, what we need to do is apply the translate y of, oh, not here shifted it here. What did I do now? <laughs> and we have a triangle in the upper part, but I should probably translate this as well, let's say by 29%. Y on the Y, so that's more visible. And another reason for translating it by 29% uh, is that the way um, I use these transforms, I use them on elements that are all absolutely positioned and centered. And so they all have initially the same transform origin, which I don't mess with. So if I translate this down, then the transform origin of the parent is going to be somewhere here. And 29% means that it's going to be exactly in the center of the in-circle or circumcircle because they uh, coincide for an equilateral triangle. But this is not an equilateral triangle. Um, so, moving further, we can do something more interesting, like morph a triangle into a hexagon. So we start with a triangle, and uh, then we have a second bigger triangle inside. And you're thinking, how inside? This is outside. Well, inside, I mean inside, thinking dome-wise, because the big triangle is going to be a descendant of the smaller triangle. And we scale the second triangle down to half, and their intersection is a hexagon. And uh, you can see that the length, edge length of this uh, regular hexagon is going to be one-third of uh, the triangle. And then we scale it down a bit more, and uh, we get uh, another smaller triangle. And to do this um, morphing, we first do something like, we have to scale it twice. But this doesn't look correct, and it didn't look right in the beginning as well, because they ought to overlap, but they don't. So um, you can see that one has the center um, in the middle of the height of the other one. So we need to translate it a bit. And by how much? By half the height and um, the inner radius. But the inner radius is one, uh, one third of the height. So it's going to be one half of the height minus one third. So that's going to be one sixth. And for the dimensions of this one, it's going to be about 0.93 amps. And I don't actually compute these things. I use SAS. But, um, I wouldn't compute these. Um, so then I scale, right? Make it double. And um, rotated by 180 degrees, right? And here I have it. And then if I scale it to one, I get the hexagon. And if I scale it to 0.5, I get the small triangle inside. So um, this is how it actually works if you turn all these uh, stages into keyframes. So stuff to remember. 
The incircle is the circle inside the polygon touching all its edges. The circumcircle is a circle containing all the vertices of a polygon. Not all polygons can have an incircle or a circumcircle. For example, concave polygons don't have a, an incircle or a circumcircle. Or a rhombus doesn't have a circumcircle. Or a, a rectangle doesn't have an incircle. But all triangles and all regular polygons do. The central angle corresponding to one edge of a regular polygon with n vertices is 360 over n. And we can compute the inner radius or the circum radius. And um, the part that's there is of a regular polygon if we know its edge length. Oops. That's when you go. Come on. So let's move on to 3D. So let's see how to build a regular pyramid, but um, not exactly those in the background. Those took too long. A CSS one uh, might be easier. So uh, we start with a base, which is a regular polygon with known edge length. It may be a triangle, a regular triangle, or a square, or a regular pentagon. It doesn't really matter. We also have some uh, lateral faces which have at least two edges equal. They might be equal to the base, but not necessarily. So how do you compute the angles of the lateral uh, triangle? And how do you compute the angles between the faces? Because you can see the, the lateral faces are at an angle with respect to the base. Well, again, it all reduces to triangles. So we'll take this, this triangle to be the lateral triangle, what you see here in orange. And um, B is uh, the base edge length. And L is the lateral edge length. And uh, gamma is the top angle for the lateral face. H is the height for the lateral face. And then we're going to take this half of it, this right triangle here. And we'll see it bigger here. And in this uh, triangle, we have that sine of gamma over 2 is b over 2 over l. And we can get um, the top angle from here, right? And we can also get the height. Again, it all reduces to those four formulas. Moving on, we have uh, the pyramid. And these are the lateral faces. And the orange line is the height of a lateral face. And this one is the height of the entire pyramid. And this one is going to be the inner radius of the base. So um, this highlighted triangle is this one here. So this is the angle between uh, the two faces. This is the height of uh, the lateral triangle. This is the inner radius of the base. And this is the height of uh, the pyramid. So uh, the base edge length. We have uh, R, the base face in radius, the pyramid height, the lateral edge length, uh, the lateral face height, the angle between the two faces. And in this triangle, we can get the angle from the cosine, which is R over H. So uh, we can get delta from there. Now, let's see how we made a cube out of pyramids. So a cube has six faces, so there are going to be six pyramids. So one comes from the bottom, one from one side, one from the top, one from the other side, one from the back, one from the front. And this is how we make a cube out of pyramids. So in this uh, case, uh, how much is uh, the base uh, uh, edge length? Well, it's obviously going to be uh, equal to the edge of the cube. But how about uh, the lateral edge? Well, let's simplify a bit this thing. And we have just two pyramids now. And let's highlight a few edges here. So you can see that one edge from here and one edge from here form the cube's diagonal. So 
the lateral edge of such a pyramid is going to be half the cube's diagonal. But how much is the cube's diagonal? Well, again, we use a right triangle. So the right triangle is going to be this highlighted one, which is also the one here. And um, the highlighted triangle at the base, this one, is the one highlighted here. So um, LC is uh, the cube's edge, uh, and D is uh, the cube's um, face diagonal. And we have the cube's diagonal. And uh, we can get uh, the diagonal of the base from this right triangle. And then we get uh, the diagonal of the cube from this other right triangle. So uh, we actually found the length of the diagonal of the cube. So we know the edge length. So um, if we replace the values, the ba uh, base edge is going to be the cube edge, the lateral edge, and the base in radius is going to be half the cube edge, and the central angle corresponding to the base edge is going to be 360 over how many um, edges there are, four in this case, so 90 degrees. And uh, the top angle for the lateral face is uh, going to be computed with that formula, and I didn't actually compute it myself. And, but it's approximately 70.53. So, uh, and uh, the angle between uh, the two faces is going to be 45 degrees. So if we actually replace this, and um, we, uh, let's see what we do to the base face. Well, first of all, we um, rotated, rotate around the x-axis by 90 degrees. Hmm, not quite right because it went somehow backwards. So the face is up, but we want the face to be down. So that's going to be minus 90 degrees. And let's make this. So the base face is simple. It's just minus 90 degrees. The lateral face, we translate it forward. That means along the z-axis. Translate z. That's going to be the in radius, which is half the base. Head. So we brought it forward. And now we need to rotate around um, the x-axis but not on, with an extra A, 45 degrees. And uh, you'll probably see it better if it's uh, on the lateral. And this is uh, rotating by uh, the central angle corresponding to one uh, face. And it can be in the other side as well, if it's minus 90, or it can be in the back if it's 180 or minus 180 is exactly the same thing. And it doesn't look that beautiful. Let's see if we can rotate the whole thing so that uh, we can see it better. So that would be like a rotate Y of the entire pyramid. And again, it's not going to work with an extra A. But it doesn't work like this either. Is that right? Somehow it is. And um, this is some, um, oops. <laughs> I think I'm cutting out the wrong slides. So, um, sorry. No, there are actually slides missing. <laughs> now, this is funny. No, there are actually slides missing. No, I found it. Oh. So, um, these are two doors that are moving in 3D. And the frame is static, so let's see what happens if we animate the frame. Uh, oh, 
alternate. And what happened to the doors? They look as if, I don't know, somebody smashed something into them and flattened them, like in cartoons, something heavy falls on a cartoon character and has to shake himself to get back. And basically, that's exactly what happens. Because there's a CSS property that is called transform style. And this thing has a default value of flat. As you can see, if I use flat, nothing changes. But as those characters shake themselves, we can shake things with something, a value called preserve 3D. And now everything is animated in 3D again. So um, this is uh, what we need to do here. So we had this translate Z. And then again, an extra A there. And rotate Y 45 degrees. And now we need to have transform style preserve 3D. And uh, now it works again. It's in 3D again. And this one was rotate x minus 90 degrees. So um, we got the pyramid. But now I lost the settings. So um, let's see what are the animation stages for uh, exploding the cube and recombining it. So first we have the pyramids closely packed. So they form a cube and their y-axis point outwards. And then the pyramids move outwards along their own y-axis, so in the positive direction. Then the pyramids rotate by half a full turn around an axis perpendicular to their own y-axis. Can be the x-axis, can be the z-axis, it doesn't really matter, any axis in that plane. And now their y-axis point towards the center of the cube after we've rotated them by 180 degrees. And now we move them back inwards by the same distance as before along their y-axis and also in the positive direction because, as I've said, the y-axis now points inwards. So, um, these were all for the other ones. Um, so, if we need um, to see how we distribute them. So, for this one, we just translate y half the cube uh, edge length. And if we had uh, before something like rotate 90 degrees, it would have been here. Or um, rotate x 90 degrees, it would have been here. But uh, let's simplify things and leave it down. And now we can increase this distance and it goes outwards. And um, now we have rotate 180 degrees. And uh, now we're going to have a translate. Uh, again, y-axis, and it's going to be 4m. And it went back. And if we make all these stages, if we turn them into keyframes, we get something like this. Right. So, goes outwards, rotates, moves back inwards. So, um, let's see the final result for this thing. It's going, oh no. 
So this is going to be the cube which explodes and then recombines into this shape. Mm. And um, then we can have, this was the second one i shown you. And it looks something like this. It's truncated. And the third one, which I busted this morning, this one expands. It starts from a tetrahedron, which expands, and it gets to a cuboctahedron, and then it collapses and into another tetrahedron. And we can make explosion more interesting. Remember the shape we got here? We can take this one and we can make it explode as well. So it's made out of pyramids, they explode, and then they recombine into something that looks like a mace, you know? That thing you can use to break somebody's head. <laughs> yeah, it, that thing with spikes. And I actually felt like using something like that for a kid that was behind me on the plane yesterday because he kept screaming and So, another example, we take a cube and then we truncate it. Then, and it's the same thing as the um, octahedron. And also, we can expand and collapse a more complex shape. This one has 12 faces and they are pentagons and they are pulled outwards and at their vertices, they're opening up triangles. And in between the edges, there are rectangles that stretch until they get uh, to form squares. And there are more things like these, more 3D solids. There is an entire collection of them. So let's see. One. This one is more interesting. It's again that rhombic dodecahedron, 12 faces, all uh, rhombing, and they expand outwards. There are uh, squares and triangles opening up at the vertices. And this is because this is, not this is not a shape that's uniform at the vertices. Uh, at certain vertices, there are four faces meeting, and at others, there are just three faces meeting. So where there are three faces meeting, you open up a triangle. Where there are four faces meeting, you open up a square. And it's not limited to solids, though my talk today focuses on them, but there are also surfaces. And you can do surfaces with just CSS. And something like this one, which is some kind of a twisted torus. We can make it twist, of course. And yes, this is just CSS. <laughs> and um, since I think I've stretched the time a bit, I'll end with a demo on stretching. Again, this is just CSS. There's nothing in the JS panel, as you can see. So this is it. Thank you.